glory to God in the highest. Father, we praise you this evening, God. We give you honor and glory. And we thank you. We thank you, Lord, that you are going to be in our midst this evening. This is a noun word. This is a quick word. God just dropped it in my spirit, driving off work tonight. And that word is for me, and I'm pretty sure it's for several other people that's going to be on the line tonight. I want to welcome you to Courage Inspired by God. You are welcome. Please invite your guests, your followers, share. Invite your guests and followers and share, please. I'm going to wait a few more seconds to see if others will come on so that I can go forward with this word. I don't want to be too long and I don't want to keep you guys too long. But before we do that, let's just go into some worship. Thanking the Father for His grace and His mercy. Thanking Him for who He is. El Shaddai. Uh, the Bible called Him in, in Genesis Elohim. The all-knowing God. Father, we want to bless your name this evening. We want to glorify your name this evening. For those that will be coming on the broadcast, oh God, in the name of Jesus. Father, I ask, oh God, that you would touch their hearts. As this word go forth that you have given me, God, I pray in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth that you would touch the heart of someone, that they will get it right tonight. Did we get it right tonight, Lord? Father, and we just come to worship you, to praise you. Many of us are hungry for you, O oh God. We are hungry for your glory. We are hungry, O oh Rabbi Shoka Rabbi Sotro. We are hungry, O oh Lord Jesus, that you come into our presence. We invite your Holy Spirit to come and interact with us, O oh God. I invite your Holy Spirit to speak through me tonight, God, in the name of Jesus. Let your will be done, God. Let thy will be done in the mighty name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Prepare the hearts of your people. Prepare the minds of your people, O oh God. Father, for the word that of which you have for me to say tonight, to speak tonight, God. And use me as your vessel to speak what you want me to say. Not what I want to say, Lord, but what you want your people to hear. May your spirit evaporate the entire broadcast this evening. May it fall on those that are hungry for your anointing. May it fall on those that are hungry for the OG. May it fall on those that are hungry for your power. May it fall on those, oh God, that, that, that cannot do without you. They're tired. They're looking in. They're looking out. They're looking different ways, east, west, south, and north, to find something that will, op that will open that void, oh God. But you are the only one that can come in the heart of a person and open the void void that is within that heart so this evening god i'm gonna go strictly to the word if you are listening this evening my name is minister life kennedy all the way from providence Rhode island i've been on on um periscope not too long but this is only because the Lord has led me to do this. I have a ministry, and I have a ministry different places on WhatsApp. I have one on YouTube and a ministry of my own. So I just bless God this evening. I bless God for those of you that are on the line, those of you that are hungry, those of you that, that, that are hungry for the tangible anointing and the presence of God. I pray this evening that it will illuminate your life. I pray this evening that the presence of God that you are yearning for will overtake your life. I pray this evening that everything that you have been asking God for, that by faith in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, it shall come to pass. But this evening, I have a word. The Lord gave me a word 
from work all the way in my car i've been preaching to myself because this word touched me and this word also is for me not just for you guys but it's for me also i hope you guys can hear me if you can hear me just tap on the screen and let me know that you can hear me if you can hear me please let me know also but just tap on the screen and say yes minister life we can hear you one time two times or three times if you are on the line tonight the lord give me a word and this word is coming out of the uh, book of genesis Hallelujah, Jesus. It's coming out of Genesis. And the thing that picked my eyes out of this word, Jesus. What really picked my eyes out of this word was the word Dust. D U S T. Dust. Oh God. Dust. Let me read it. It comes out of the book of Genesis, chapter 2, verse 7. It says, And the Lord formed man of the dust of the grounds and breathe into his nostrils the breath of life hear me closely because sometimes we don't catch on to the word and the lord formed men of dust of the grounds and breathe into his nostril breath of life and man became a living being. <laughs> that word took me to the next level today. Folks, I'm telling you. I've heard it so many times. Especially when you go to funerals. Thus you came and thus shall I return. But today the Lord made it seem very different to me. Especially for those that are in the land of the living. Those that have breath in your body. Those that are able to speak. Those that are able to talk. Those that can move your hands. A living being. I was contemplating on the word. I said, Lord, I said, Lord, I've seen the word before. I've heard it before. I've heard it preached so many times. But I need you to make it plain so that I can make it plain to your people. That someone will understand. Hallelujah. Somebody will understand what does it mean, uh, Pastor Life. Dust. Dust. You were created and dust. Thou shall return. When I thought about this word today, it brought so many things to memory. I said, Lord, you know, there are so many times in my life that I wanted to give up. I should have given up. I should have thrown in the tower so many times in my life. Hurt, pain, hurt, pain. Hurt from people that call themselves your family members. Oh, yeah. Hurts from people that are supposed to love you, that carried you nine months in their belly, and they call you a mistake. Hurt. Severe hurt. But the, as I begin to grow in the things of God, I remember the Lord reminding me that, that that daughter, this is like cancer. You must release. You must forgive and release these people out of your life. 
And it's not to say that you can love them. You can love them, but love them from a distance. Love them from a distance and protect your heart. These were people that said, I'll do anything in the world for you. I love you so much. You are my spiritual daughter. You are my this and you are my dad. Hurt. I began to keep those things in my heart before coming strong to the Lord. I kept it so much in my heart that I hated to see the grounds that some of them walk on. How, how, how can you hate someone that loves you? How, how, can, how can you pay back someone that did everything for you with hate? It burns me. And the Lord began to speak to me today, to speak to someone that's going to be listening to this broadcast. That whatever it is that you've been through, whatever it is that they have put you through, whatever it is, I don't care what the situation is. Mother have left you. Father have left you. They did the same thing to me. Abandoned and forsaken. Sisters, brothers, you don't even hear from them anymore. Forget about friends. They are just the most betrayal things in the world. But God said to me, what is this thing that people, people keep to themselves? A uh, speech. I'm not going to speak to this person anymore. I, I'm, I'm not going to talk to this individual anymore. Why? Uh, uh, because they hurt me. They hurt me so badly. They, 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 they really caused something in my heart. I begin to look at the word again, dust. Then the Lord said, all this is nothing. Because when your life on earth has expired, when your life on earth is finished, the ones that hated you and you never forgive them, the one that had things against you and oh, brethren, trust me, beloved, I'm speaking to life, not the pastor. I'm speaking to life because when you talk about pain and hurt, yes, I probably would have even been in jail today because the pain was so severe. But God, he said, you must let go and allow me to come in to heal the wounds. You must let go. They don't want to talk to you. They don't want to love you. They don't want to speak to you. They have nothing to say to you. You have to let it go. Yes, you did X, Y, and Z for this individual, or for these people, or for your mother, or for your father, or for your cousin, or for your sister, for your brother. Whatever the situation may be, whatever the situation is, I'm I'm just a vessel of God. And I come to encourage somebody's heart tonight. I come to encourage somebody's heart tonight that you should let it go and let God in. Let the Holy Spirit come in and heal your heart. I know what it is to be broken. I know what it is when they hurt you and they act as if it's okay. I know what it is when they say all manner of evil things against you. But guess what? That's what makes you a child of the living God. Jesus. I know what it is to hurt. And I want to encourage you. If there's anyone that have hurt your heart. If there's anyone that have broken you down to nothing. If there's anyone that have overlooked you. I want you to forgive them. The spirit of the living God needs you to forgive them. Forgive them and let them go. Set your heart free. It's not worth it. Nobody knows tomorrow. 
from dust we came hekabasho and dust we shall return one of these old days and when you return to to, to, the, to heaven, when you return to the to Christ Jesus, Yahweh, when you return to him, you are not going with anything. You're not going with money. You're not going with those people that have hurt you. You are not going with your houses and your cars. You're not going with anything. You are taking one thing with you. It's called accountability to God and God alone. Just listen to the scripture. It says, and the Lord God formed man all out of dust. All this thing, this bigotry thing, we behave as though we are some sort of, uh, 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 I don't know what, in the church. We behave as though we are better than other people. We behave as though, you know, when the elites come in, we have to sit in the back of the church. It's okay. Because dust you came, I don't care how big you are. I don't care what kind of title you got on you. Dust shall thou return. The Bible says, And God, God breathed, he breathed into his, into his nostril, which is Adam, the breath of life. I know what it means to suffer it. I know what it means to go through some hard times. As a young person, I had a stepmother that hated me. I had a, I, 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 I had a father that I loved, but I never could have a relationship with my father because my stepmother was so selfish. She was so selfish. And I carried that in my heart for a long time. Then I turned around and had a mother that was supposed to be there. Let me tell you something, brethren, beloved. If you are not ready to have a child, do not bring a child into this world. If you're not ready to cultivate, if you're not ready to nurture, if you're not ready to care for, if you're not ready to pour in to that child, Please don't get pregnant because this is what, this is what really killed many of us. I'm so glad that when I got to school, when I got to college, my, 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 my degree was in psychology, clinical psychology, because I wanted to know why am I abandoned? Why did my mother abandon me? Why did my father abandon me? Am I not good enough? Yes, you are. When I received Jesus Christ into my heart and into my life, he said, yes, you are, daughter. You are a child of the living God. I allowed you to live. And I come to encourage the heart of someone this evening. You are the child of the living God. Whether they like you or not, whether they don't like you or not, it don't matter with Jesus. God said, all things are working together. Hey, Kabo, all things are working together for good, for them that love you and that are called by your name. Oh, Jesus, that I call by his name. My Lord and my God, don't give up. Don't give up, child of God. Don't give up, child of God. You hear what the word of God says. It says, dust we came and dust we shall return. No wonder. Mm. No wonder. Some of the things I went through felt like they had dug, dug six, uh, they had dug my grave six feet. It felt like dust. It felt like dirt. I felt useless. Beloved, some of the things they're going to do to you will hurt you. It will kill your spirit in you. But the Bible says, greater is he. Oh, Thank God that you are a child of God. Don't never deviate from that. Thank God that you know Jesus Christ. Thank God that you are entangled with the love of God. Thank God that the Holy Spirit is the one leading your life. I come to encourage you this evening. I could have turned in the tower. I could have given up. I 
I felt like nothing because I was abandoned. This is why my book is coming up. I'm, my book is coming up. It's in the publisher's hands already. And it's called Courage, in, Courage Inspired by God. And I wrote this. The Lord allowed me. He gave me the vision and inspired me to write this book. He inspired me to write this book for parents, for the youth. Parents, love your children. Let me tell you what psychology tells you. Whatever you put in a child when that child is an infant, he grows up and becomes that thing. So if you love that child from the beginning, that child grows up with love inside of it. But if you hate that child and beat that child the way I was beaten, and, and nobody cares about you, nobody calls you, they abandon you, but yet and still they expect you to be the best. Only if you have God, you can turn out to be the best. And I give him the glory today. This is why my life is a living testimony. It's a living testimony for folks out there. Young people out there that are going through stuff. And then you see parents that have never cared for them. They want to come in now to, 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 to act as if they care. Let God be your everything. Let God be your everything. From dust you came and dust shall die. Return. And when you return... Hey, when you return, guess what they do? Guess what they do, beloved? They get a casket for you. They get a casket for you. Things they never done for you before are things that you will see them doing. I've seen it with my two eyes. You never loved this lady. You never give her the best. But now that she's gone, you buy her the best casket in the world. <laughs> and then the spirit of the living God began to manifest and say, this is it. This is what I said in my word in Genesis chapter 2 verse 7. You've lived your life. You've done all you can. You have the houses and you have the cars, but you neglected one thing. I give you a gift. I give you a gift. Even though the gift did not look significant to you. I give you a gift. You live the most lavished lifestyle but you forgot my gift you forgot my gift god is going to tell you when you get in there you forgot my gift what did you do with the gift that i give you the gift that i give you was just not your mouth the gift that i give you was my daughter it was my son what did you do with my gift many parents won't know what to say and i said this in my book and that's the only thing I'm going to say until you guys can purchase the book when it comes out. Don't bring a child into this world if you're not ready to, to nurture. Don't bring a child into this world if you're, not, if you're not ready. If you're not ready to love, unconditional love for that child. Even if that child is a stepchild, even if that child is not your own, love it. Because you never know it could be the next Barack Obama. It could be the next you don't know who. Love it. I wish my stepmother had loved me the way she loved her children. But look at me today. The nobody. Mephibosheth. Look at us today. The Mephibosheths. That's who I come to speak to. When they thought he was going down to the dust. Oh God, my God. When they thought Mephibosheth would never get back up. Second Samuel chapter 9. When they thought because Mephibosheth's father... And grandfather had died. So he would never step back up. But the devil is a lie. God sent.
send him somebody. The Lord will never forget his own. The Lord will never forget his children. The Lord will never forget the ones that are seeking after him. The Lord will never forget the one that he allowed to come into this world to serve him. The Lord will never forget us. He sent David. Even though Saul wanted to kill David. But David, in all his thinking, said to himself, I respect spiritual authority. Not only that, but I respect my covenant with my friend, Jonathan. So I must go and look and see if there is anyone from the household of Saul or Jonathan that I can help. I thank God for my Davids and I thank God for my Mordecai's. I thank God. I thank God for those that love me for who I was. That never laughed at me. They thought I never was going, they thought I was never going to make it in this life. They were planning my funeral while I was in coma, yes. I just come to encourage your soul this evening. Stand still and see the salvation of God. Don't give up. Don't give up. Stand still. Stand still. Do not give up. Do not give up. Stand still and see the salvation of God moving and working in your life. See the hands of God moving where your hands cannot even touch. See the, sp the spirit of the living God walking and talking and fixing it for you. See the overflow over your life. When your haters thought that you would never make it, you would never mount to nothing. You would never, you would never, you would never graduate from college. Here yeah, I am today. I'm a living testimony. But it's not to boast in myself. It is to boast in the Lord my God Almighty. Oh, glory to God. It is to boast in the Lord God Almighty. Thank you for joining. Um, freak, I can, I can hear it. It is freak, freak, freak ten or something. I'm not, I'm not sure. Good evening, good evening, everyone. God bless you. Good evening, Carpy. God bless you. Top shot. God bless you. Thank you for joining. Please invite your your guest. I just want to encourage you guys this evening, as the Lord has given me this word. Don't give up and don't give in. Don't give up and don't give in. Stay connected to God. I don't care what people have said about you. I don't care how much they have put you down. I don't care what the thing about you. God thinks the best about you. I'm telling you, if nobody has seen, I've seen it all. And when the Lord reinforced this scripture to me today, I looked around me and I said to myself, what is all this for? What is all this for? I hate this one. I don't like this one. This one don't like me. Why do they hate me? It does not matter. The only thing that matters is that you know Jesus Christ and that you know him in the uttermost part of your being and that you are anger. You are anger in him. That's important. Dust we came in this world. And dust we shall return. Do you think it's worth it? Don't hold on to that grudge. Don't hold on to that malice. Don't hold on to anything that will affect your relationship with God. Let it go. Let it go. Let it go. Let it go. It's not worth it. I cry many nights. 
I cry many nights because of the way people treated me. Sometimes people would take your kindness for granted. Sometimes people would think because you are so kind and so nice that they think you are a fool. You're not a fool. This is just the heart that God has given you. You're not a fool at all. Trust God. I can't wait for my book to come out because I know it's going to help thousands of people, thousands of youth, thousands of folks out there. It's going to help them because I am a living testimony of what it means to come out of a home that is broken and live with a stepmother that despises you because she sees the good inside of you. Why? Be encouraged tonight, you guys. Be encouraged tonight and hold on to the hands of God. God has you here for a reason. There's a purpose and a reason for everything that we were created for. There is a purpose for your life. There is a purpose for you going through the storm that you had to go through. There is a purpose for you encountering the, the things that you had to encounter from the very people that that said they loved you there is a purpose and that purpose is not an easy purpose but God will help you in the midst of the storm to go through that purpose so that when you come out you can shine pure as gold Twenty sixteen. I almost died I'm going to get your short testimony and then I'm going to leave and the reason why the Lord is allowing me to say this is because somebody needs to hear this this evening. Let it go. 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 I'm pleading with you this evening. I don't know who I'm talking to. Or who do you or who you know that needs to let it go. Talk to them. Let it go. Pray for that individual that I've hurt you. The Bible says, vengeance. God said, vengeance is mine, said the Lord. Touch not my anointed and do my prophets no harm. And he means it when you can stand and trust in him and be, allow him to be that confidence that you say, you know what? As much as I want to fight back in the physical, I'm going to stand in this realm of the spirit and begin to bombard with my spiritual tongue and begin to call down angels from heaven to war against those that are warring against me. 2016, I was sick. I'm going to have to give my testimony one of these days on Periscope. I had what they call pursuer. Pseudo tumor cerebri. It's water in the brain. I suffered with that for 30 something years of my life on earth. But Jesus. I thought I was going to die. I was suffering with headaches, and people thought it was migraine headaches. Doctors thought it was migraine headaches. It was not migraine headaches. It was all the things I have kept in my heart. People have hurt me. They hurt me. They hurt me. They hurt me. They brutalized me. They took advantage of my kindness. They stopped speaking to me for no reason. I was much younger at that time. And God said, daughter, while they are planning your funeral, you are in an induced coma. This is not going to lead to death. I could hear everything they were saying, but my foot could not move. My hands could not move. My eyes could not move. My mouth could not talk. The only thing that was talking was my heart. Inside of my heart. Let it go, 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 let it go. I don't know who I'm speaking to today, but let it go. Let it go. 
I don't know why God has me on this broadcast at 12 a.m., 1 o'clock in the morning, but let it go. Whoever you are, let it go. The Lord taught me how to free myself. He taught me how to give him all of my issues and all of my problems. He said, you're going to come out of this coma. And when you come out, you're going to come out pure as gold. And when people see you, they're not going to recognize you anymore. Right now, you are 89, 89 pounds when I, was in, when, I was, uh, when I was sick. And now I'm 140 pounds. Solid as a rock. My God is good. Let it go. I came and I came with a different mindset. My mentality, when a person mentality changes, everything about them change. Mm. I wish somebody could write that down. When a man or a woman mentality changes, something about them change. I was not the same anymore. The life that went in the hospital and the life that came out of the hospital, complete different people. I learned the power of the Holy Spirit taught me how to totally depend on God and leave everything in his hands. He taught me how to take these things and people that have hurt me and lay it at his altar. If you don't have an altar at home, for God, pray that God will teach you how to create an altar for him. That's a special place where you go to pray and hear from the throne of grace. I took all those hurt and those pains, what my step-parents had done to me, what my stepmother had done, what my mother had done, what how, how they had neglected everything in my life that people had done to me. I took it to the altar that night with fasting and praying. And I did not whip John. I did not leave that place until I had an encounter with Christ. And since then, until today, the Lord brought this back to my attention. For someone or someone that knows someone to go back to them and tell them, I know you hate that person. I know that person did you wrong. I know they walk away from you and you did nothing to them. But God said, let them go. God said, release them to him. Let him be the one to fight for you. And when God fights for you, you will feel sorry and you will ask God, God, please let it be. So tonight, the only reason why I came back on, on this periscope, I should have been back tomorrow, not today actually, but in the morning time was because God said life tell them from dust we came we have nothing all this beauty and this beautiful clothes and the Gucci and the this and the that uh, what else again the, this is, is Gucci and uh, 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 Armani Valentino all these things these worldly things that now church members have made my house the house of God into some kind of showboat who told you Jesus care about these things that's why when he went into his father's house he threw everything on the floor even Jesus got mad He said, you are not going to turn my father's house into a den of teas. His house is called the house of prayer. Let it go, beloved. It's not worth it. Let them talk. Let them gossip. Let them say any manner of things they want to say about you. The one thing that you do know in your heart is that you are a child, not even Christian. You are a Child of the living God, bonafide child of God, child of God that is intertwined with the Holy Spirit, child of God that is angled to God, that no matter what happens in your life, I don't care if the bridge falls on top of a house, you stand still and you say, I trust in God. You tell, I trust in God no matter what. My enemies may hate me, 
my enemies may say all sort of things about me, but it's okay. I trust in God. I trust in God. I'm sold out to the Holy Ghost. I'm sold out. My heart is sold out. I forgive. I forgive. No more malice. No more grush. No more nothing that will hinder my walk with Christ. No more. I forgive you. And I let you go. I release you out of my heart. I release you out of my heart by giving you to Jesus Christ. By laying you on the altar. When I lay you on the altar and I ask God to take over, then my heart is clear. It's release. Peace. When I see you in the street, hello. But I must love from a distance because I'm not going to put my heart on the line for it to keep breaking i'm not gonna continue to put my heart where people this is why god is doing the separation he's separating you and you're wondering you're crying oh my god why did she have to go why did he have to go yes god is doing it for your own good he says what in the book of romans 8 28 he says i'm working all things together for what for your good He's working it out for your good. He's removing that individual from your life for, for a reason. Because that person is in your life. But really, that person in your life is, 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 is not a real person. He or she is there to betray you. To take from you. And God is not going to allow it to happen anymore. So God wants you to release them. Get them out of your life, lives. Get them out of your hearts. Get them out of your mind. Let God be the restorer. Let God begin to restore you. Let God begin to elevate you. Let God begin to take you where he wants to take you. Let God begin to do a new and now work inside of you. Let God begin to prune you and purge you and take you to your next level. You will be just like a diamond in the rough. It's in my book. I can't tell you much about that. You will be just like a diamond in the rough. When it's all said and done and it put you up, you will see God will show you off. He will show off. He will prepare the table before you. Yes, he kababa shoto. In the very presence of your enemies, those that talk about you, those that say all manner of evil things against you, those that say you will never mount to be nothing, those that say you ain't going to be anything in life, he will prepare that table for you. In their presence, you will invite each and every one of them. Come and eat. And they will wonder in their hearts, how did he get over? How did she get over? Nothing but the grace of God. The grace of God. That's what I tell people. The grace of God. Ain't nothing good that we have done. It's just the grace of God. Nothing good. Nothing good. Nothing good. It's just the grace of God. That's why Paul said in the book of Philippians, Paul said, I count everything as rubbish. Everything as foolish. Everything as rubbish. Why? Because to know Christ, that's all I'm living for, is to know my God. But Paul said, to die is to gain. When I've done all I can on this earth, and I've, I've, I've really poured my heart into the spirit of the living God, and the spirit of the living God has taught me what I needed to know, and then it has empowered me to go out and empower others, then I've done my job. To live is for Christ. But to die is to gain. I want to live so that Jesus, so that I can, I, can, I can accomplish my work that God has called me to do. So that you can accomplish your work that God has called you to do. I pray for longevity for you. I pray that every need that you are standing in need of, that God will meet you right where you are. I pray that every satanic attack, every strategist of the enemy this evening, we cancel, we cancel, we cancel, we cancel, we cancel about the blood of Jesus. This evening, I plead the blood. I plead the blood over each and every one of you that are watching, every one of you that are hearing under the tone of my voice. Each and every one of you, may the power of the Holy Ghost empower you this evening. May you go and release, forgive, and forget. Let it go.
in the name of Jesus. Listen, my name is Pastor Life, all the way from Providence, Wadaden. I love you guys so much. Thank you so much for encouraging me. Thank you so much for coming on. This is my, th I think, third or fourth time coming on Periscope because why? The Lord led me to come on this. I'm on WhatsApp. I have my ministry and I have other, so many other things that I'm doing right now. And I can't wait for the book to come out so that people can be helped, so that children can know that they are special. Just because you are a stepchild does not mean that it's over for you. You are a stepchild, but to God, you are his child. You are his child. So I must leave for now. I got to go. It's 2 o'clock in the morning, and I need I really need some one-on-one -on -one time with God. But I'm so grateful to God this evening for allowing me to speak exactly what he wanted me to say to whoever that's going to be watching the broadcast this evening. And I, I thank you guys for coming on at this time of the morning. And please, next time you come on, allow other people to come in also so that they can hear the word of God. People in this day and time needs to hear the word of God. They own uncompromised, authentic word of God needs to be preached, taught well to them in this day and time. May God bless you. May heaven continue to smile upon your faces as you go about your daily activities today. May God bless you. May strength be your portion. May the strength of Jesus Christ be your portion in the name of Jesus. We give him praise. Lord, we give you praise. Holy Ghost, I give you glory for use in your vessel. I'm just a vessel. I don't have time for title. I don't have time for anything, God. All I have time for, Lord, is just to make sure that I please you, to do the things that you have called me to do. God bless each and everyone. In Jesus' name, may God bless you all. Amen.